Hey guys, how are you today? I'm having a thing with Neutrogena makeup. I fully believe this is one of the most slept on underrated brands in the drugstore. Now, do they have their faults? Have they had some issues over the years with shade range and, you know, having some foundations that still to this day are out in 15 colors, but some newly released things are out in like 35 or 40 colors. Maybe they are hearing some things we're saying, but the formulas are truly so good. So I'm not going to cease talking about them, I will just continue talking about them and continue to call them out saying just put out some more shades and healthy skin, okay? But no, I've just really been recognizing over recent days like how good my base products from Neutrogena are and I thought I want to do a little roundup. I want to walk people through the different coverage levels and consistencies and just what to expect out of some of these base products and then kind of go on and continue to do a look with some things that some of them I know I've used in the past and I've recently re purchased um, like this mascara, this eyeliner, and then they've got some newer things where I'm like, oh, I want to try that. The Micro Brow Tint Serum Pen and the Sensitive Skin Eyeshadow and Primer. I want to try to branch out and complete the look, okay? First things first, I have five of their coverage foundation type products. I do not have the skin clearing formula currently. That's what caters to blemishes and breakouts. That's not really a key problem of mine at the moment, but they do have that skin clearing range, which I think includes concealer and also powder. But just to chat for a moment about what has the most coverage that Neutrogena makes. They make this flawless matte CC cream clear coverage with niacinamide B3. Um, this is actually beautiful coverage. It's been a little while since I've worn this on camera and I'm going to use it today. I have the shade Porcelain 2.0. This is the one that comes in a lot of shades, okay? Another issue I have with Neutrogena is that even the products that come in fewer shades, the stores are not doing a good job of stocking even a fraction of what they actually make. I was in Walgreens the other day, I was looking for this Radiant Cream Concealer, and I was noticing how like, okay, they're stocking, it looks like four foundation shades. It's not good enough, so there needs to be, I guess, some better oversight, some better execution in the stores, but it would be great to see an expansion done among some of these older line products, like the next highest coverage, which is Neutrogena Healthy Skin. Now, this is not full coverage foundation. This is just the next in line. I would call this um, a really solid medium coverage foundation. This is the OG from Neutrogena. It's been around a long time. It often gets compared to the NARS Sheer Glow. Um, this is called Healthy Skin Liquid Makeup with Titanium Dioxide Sunscreen, SPF 20. It claims to have an antioxidant blend. It is lightweight. It is one of those foundations where your skin just immediately looks better after you've put it on because it just has that that little bit of radiance, not a fake looking shimmery radiance, but there is a little bit of glow that comes with this. And I think some pretty beautiful coverage in that medium bracket. This flawless matte CC cream is approaching full. Then on down the line, we have the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Tint. And this is their big like hyaluronic acid boss product here. It moisturizes and plumps skin for 24 hours. I do love this. This is my most recent like rediscovered, getting back into it thing. Recently repurchased it. By the way, the shade I wear in this is buff. I also wear buff in this. Um, application wise, you're going to have a doe foot, which I do think is more handy than this. You know, a pump would be nice for that. But you swipe it on and you feel like there's a little more richness in the texture compared to healthy skin. Like you can tell there's some more moisture. However, I feel a slight bit less coverage, but it's buildable. So you can kind of add it up and get to this place, but your skin's going to look a little more juicy and hydrated with the hydrating tint, the Hydro Boost hydrating tint on. Lighter coverage yet, we have the Sensitive Skin Serum Foundation. This I have in Light Dash Medium 02. This is under the Healthy Skin range and has Pro Vitamin B5. Says it helps maintain skin's moisture barrier for healthy looking skin. They specifically point out this is for sensitive skin. It's non-comedogenic. It's formulated without fragrance dyes, parabens, phthalates, alcohol, or sulfates. Here they've given us the dropper style. Um, the dropper does seem to work. <laughs> um, I think that's worth pointing out. Extreme extremely thin, extremely lightweight, definitely light coverage. Not really my most favorite, just because I feel like if I'm going for a light, somewhat hydrated, luminous look, maybe I'll just go for the Hydro Boost or even Healthy Skin. Like both of those, I just prefer them so much. The Hydro Boost, maybe if you're wanting that little bit more of a moisture boost to your skin that day, this thin, light, still a good product, still can look pretty on the skin, but I'm not like, oh wow, after I put it on, okay? It's just giving you less. It's giving you less coverage and just thinner on the skin 
all in all. And I should point out that so far, the one of these that contains the sunscreen is the Neutrogena Healthy Skin with the SPF 20. Now the final thing, which I think looks the lightest on the skin, but for its kind of multitasking nature, I would say I probably prefer it over this one. It's this, it's the Radiant Tinted Moisturizer from the Healthy Skin range. This has SPF 30, the most sunscreen out of any of these. Antioxidants A, C, and E, I wear it in Sheer Fair 20. While it is light coverage, you see what I mean when I pop it on, it really could feel like a one and done, lightweight for the day kind of thing. Whereas this, I'm getting pretty much just as light of coverage, but no SPF, and these still feel really thin and light. So I was trying to keep that a quick roundup. I thought I was gonna like burn through that info, but it took me a little while. But I wanted you to know kind of where things rank. I also do have a mineral shears yesterday on when I was at Walgreens, it was a BOGO deal. So I grabbed the mineral shears powder foundation, and I also got the Radiant Cream Concealer, which I feel like I've used this in the past. I got it in the shade Ivory now. Um, I think I had something deeper before. The other concealer that I have is Hydro Boost Stick Concealer. Really good absolutely love this. Um, it's a stick concealer with a little hydrating core. I wear it in fair. Um, just talk about easy to swipe on, get some quick coverage, might not give you the most coverage. As a shape taper, a camo concealer, I can't stop, won't stop, but it's also great for the dry summertime months when your skin is just like, you know, I got dry around my nose, not only from sun exposure, but I think from having a cold and wiping my nose. And this concealer is great going on around there actually, and great for not just exactly exaggerating the look of that dryness and it could not be more user-friendly. I mean the glide on, the swipe on is just gorgeous. By the way, every foundation product I mentioned, um, yes you could apply them with sponges, but I would prefer brushes with pretty much all of them. Um, I just think it enhances the coverage they have. Most of what I'm discussing there is in the medium to light range with the exception of this that gives you a little bit more. So I, I think they do really well with a brush, like an e.l.f. duo complexion brush, a Real Techniques expert face brush, something dense like that. So we're going to hop into this one, the Flawless Matte CC. This has the niacinamide. It says it's a full coverage matte color correcting cream formulated with niacinamide B3 designed to mask skin imperfections and even skin tone for a flawless looking complexion. It's free from oil, fragrance, parabens, and phthalates, and it's in the porcelain 2.0 shade. And like I said, as I was browsing Neutrogena's own website, trying to get a feel for what the shade ranges actually are, since it's sometimes so hard to get a read on it in store. Store. This is actually the one that comes out in a very full shade range. Here we go, blending in. And I think it is more important that this comes out in more shades because if it's going to have more coverage, um, each individual shade is going to be a little less forgiving. So people kind of need to have some on point options. For me to be able to talk about that many different coverage products and really feel fairly pleased with pretty much all of them from one given line. Like, I think that's pretty awesome. And the neat thing about this, it's giving you coverage, but yet I still feel somewhat radiant. I guess I went into this fairly hydrated with my the way my skincare is. And I can like look up close at my nose and feel like, yeah, it looks like it's doing some mattifying, but yet my overall complexion doesn't look too cakey. Okay, because it still has thinness, and I think that's part of it. We're gonna make sure we get it blended around the neck, all around here. Pretty great stuff. Has good staying power. So does Healthy Skin. Healthy Skin has phenomenal staying power on me. I would just say this probably isn't as blanket out matte as the name implies, flawless matte, but it's doing pretty good on the flawless claim. Today, given the fact that I've talked so much about this little stick, I do want to bust out some of this. Um, I was not pleased with the shade range I saw. I got Ivory Light 01 and I found 02 in stock and it seemed like just an absolute ocean of shades could have fit in between those two. The 02 was so much darker than the 01, so whatevs. I went with the lighter one. Let's see if we like what it does. Like I said, this video is going to be sort of a mix of like some tried and true and some newer to me because I want to know more about Neutrogena. The foundations are where I really feel like I have my knowledge, you know. Um, I'm going to take some of my stick too. And I'm going to go around the nose because I just love how hydrating that is there. And a little chin. Maybe I'll be really happy with this shade as concealer. Maybe it was meant to be, but it was just kind of confusing as I looked at shades one and shades two. Uh, where do I fall? Somewhere in between, I guess. 
As always, I would love to get a discussion going in the comments section about this brand, about what you've tried, liked, not liked, you know, uh, what's your skin type, and what kind of info can you offer. I am a normal to dry skin type, so my enjoyment of some of these hydrating things, that's kind of where that comes from. Okay, I would say this concealer was really workable. I don't feel like it's ultra full coverage, like it was able to fairly easily sort of sheer out into the skin, if that makes sense. So the white look of it isn't quite so opaque. And it does feel like that area is still nicely hydrated. It gave me more coverage than where I was at. I'd really like to see this alongside some of the other coverage products I have because this CC is helping it out quite a bit. This one came in and said, I'll cover a lot. And then it's like, well, what are you gonna do? You didn't need to do that much. But I must admit it does look good. Let me get the rest blended in. I don't even know if I got down there. <laughs> I want to take just some translucent powder to set my under eye. This is Wet n Wild Photo Focus. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if Neutrogena, do they have, I feel like they might have like a, a white kind of mattifying pressed powder or something like that in their range. Um, they have loose powders, but they're actually dubbed as mineral powder foundations. Yeah, they came out back in that era. And like I said, I grabbed one of the mineral shears pressed because I thought I might like that for all over, but I'm just gonna use a little translucent powder here on the under eye. I might be getting a little heavy handed here, but I can dust away the excess. Guys, what do you know about neck pain and migraines? I got it. <laughs> I did something to my neck. It was on the last day of school. I was driving and I'm pretty sure I twisted this direction to look over my shoulder as I was pulling out of my driveway. And I think I just, I, I truly injured it. And after a few hours, like I felt the soreness. I didn't really feel like snap, pop, major injury in the moment. But like after some hours had passed, I thought, oh, what did I do to my neck? It's really sore. And then a couple hours after that, I had a migraine. And in subsequent days, I went on to have like continued neck pain and a couple more migraines. And I've been to the doctor. They've given me some medicine to kind of help in what I'm feeling. And the medicine is helpful. When I've been on it, I feel like I've been free from the migraines, but I'm due for some physical therapy, actually. That's supposed to be getting scheduled for me soon, so I can really um, work out, hopefully, some of the issues. Um, in the meantime, I've been doing like some stretches that I found on YouTube from physical therapists there that seem to be addressing the exact thing I'm dealing with. So I think that's helped me in recent days, maybe get a little loosened up because I found myself like, after knowing I've done something to my neck, I found myself walking around like trying not to move my neck. Like I don't want to aggravate the issue. I don't want to like flare up into something. So I'm just going to try to be really careful about my neck. Um, and really, I think I probably during a lot of that time needed to be stretching it out, loosening it up, doing all these different helpful things that I guess I probably should have been in with some kind of physical therapist from day one. But yeah, I am migraine prone. Living normal life, I don't probably get more than one migraine every few months. This has been one of those situations where I've had them kind of back to back to back and it's really, I think, tied to the next stuff. That looks pretty. The skin looks really nice right now, does it not? It's kind of like this stuff takes maybe just a couple minutes to sort of sink in isn't the right word, but kind of like just set in to your skin, become one with your skin in the few minutes after blending. And you just notice kind of a difference. I do want to take a little bit of this mineral shears powder foundation, which I have in classic ivory um, over everything. This is oil-free, fragrance-free, lightweight foundation with sheer to medium buildable coverage. So this could be our foundation if we wanted it to be. I'm just going to take BK Beauty 107. And yeah, as I was playing with this yesterday, I thought, wow, that's really mattifying. This is not like glowy at all. It's straight up matte. I'm just doing a light amount because I really kind of liked the look that I was getting on my skin currently, but we'll take a little setting. Really nice. Pleased with that. Um, Neutrogena does make available in some places, you can find a little mosaic bronzer. Um, mosaic bronzer, mosaic powder blush. They each have like four shades in them. At one time I had the bronzer, but I don't anymore. Um, so I'm gonna have to use something else. I'm just gonna go with my L'Oreal True Match Lumi Bronze It in the deep shade. And we'll just sub that in. But for blush, I do have something that I've loved and I know I've talked about 
several times here. Their hydrating multi-use stick is so good, and the shade is called Temptation. I've only ever seen that one shade, and it's so nice. Great, truly great texture on both the cheeks and the lips. And it's gonna work great with this shirt today, too. And another lip thing, of course, we know the sweatpants of lip colors. That's taking you back. If that phrase means something to you, you were watching when I was in the other house um, talking about the Neutrogena Moisture Smooth Color Sticks. I mean, some of the most comfortable but still pigmented, beautiful jumbo lip crayons you can get. There was a time where every brand was putting out their jumbo lip crayons, and Neutrogena to this day is still putting out the Moisture Smooth Color Sticks. We love to see that. Okay, so... I've just applied this somewhat gently around hairline, around contour zone a little bit. It's a really nice bronzer. I love this. Then here is our stick. This is on the highly recommended list. Again, Temptation's all you're going to find it in. I'm going to swipe some on here. I will do a little lip. It feels like just creamy, nice lip balm, you know. Take Sephora 56, anything dense that you have that you like does give a little hydration, but it's not like sticky sticky. Look at this color. This really fresh, corally shade. Now is the time. Summertime. Get you that. Like, I, I don't know why there's only one shade in this, but yet I kind of get it because it's so pretty and so perfect. It's like a rosy coral fusion, and it's great. It's lovely. Look at that glow. Uh, do you need highlighter when your skin is doing this? I don't think so. What else do they say about it? It's got hyaluronic acid in it. They say you can smudge this on your eyelids if you want to. Speaking of eyes, let's move on to something brand spanking new to me. This is the Brow Tint Serum Pen. Uh, it says it has panthenol in it. I got the deep brown shade. They say this is an on-the-go nourishing pre precision tipped yes everything in the Neutrogena brand will be nourishing precision tipped pen that provides a transfer proof and realistic hair like finish instantly giving you natural looking brows apply your hair like strokes in an upward motion on clean dry brows let dry for 20 seconds okay you try to shake it it doesn't really seem like anything's shaken up okay we've got our fine tipped little pen here it is a brush a brush tip and this uh, deep brown looks real close to black, so I'm going to need to be careful. Oh my gosh. It is doing little hairs. Little dark hairs. Oh my gosh. Like I'm swiping it up there. It is truly looking like something. But you got to be careful. You got to be kind of intentional about it because the darkness shows so much. I might not have needed to go this dark, but I don't know. I think there were like three color options. Again, Neutrogena colors. I would hold a special live event if word got out that they finally expanded their range of healthy skin. If they made this the shade range it needed to be, re-promoted it, gave it a pump, keep the actual formula the same. Don't change the formula. Just put it out in more colors, give it a pump, and re-promote. I will sound off. I will host a press conference here on my channel. That's what needs to happen. Maybe a few more shades of this too. Just saying. Um, so look what this has done. Look what this little pen has slowly but surely done for my brows. It really has filled in. You gotta be so careful here. Like really light strokes because this shade is so dark. It can look like hair, but yet yeah, that, that looks... I wouldn't say this is for the brow beginner. This takes some finesse, maybe more finesse than I have. You've got to be so light with it, especially if you're working with this color. And I got a fairly thick brow to fall back into, but still up here, you don't want it to look obvious. My natural hairs are maybe a little finer than this is able to create. I'm trying, I'm trying to go real, real light. You can fill in some really specific places like a little scar, nice for that. Just don't want to look too harshy harsh right in here. <laughs> A little scary. I wonder now. Oh, well look at that. Guys, they said let it dry for 20 seconds. I definitely did. And I literally just swept through this brow and took, I could see some product being taken away by my spoolie. Let's see if we take some away here. That one already set. Odd. Maybe I'm moving it a little bit. 
We're going to go soft, natural, and hydrating with all these products, and then we're going to give you the darkest brow you've ever had. Em's thinking, repeated spooling must do something, right? <sighs> I'm going to take a little NYX Control Freak for hold. God knows we don't need more color. It'll be fine. Once the eye comes together, we'll, we'll forget about this. It stresses me out a little bit. I don't need that stress in my life at this time. Let's move on to the Sensitive Skin Eyeshadow Plus Primer. Healthy Skin. Soft Pearl was the one and only shade. I've seen this so many times and finally picked it up. It has Pro Vitamin B5. Multitasking Primer Plus Eyeshadow delivers a beautiful metallic finish. Lightweight cream to powder formula. Long wearing. Effortlessly glides onto eyelids. Okay. Well, let's just give it a go on its own since it claims to be a eye sh an eyeshadow plus primer. We're going to go without our safety blanket today. Ooh, it's pretty. Like, it kind of makes sense to be on there so low. Add a little more. Um, just kind of blending over my lid with my fingertip. It, it's really liquidy and thin, and it just gives that little like a little shimmery glaze. I wouldn't mind if Neutrogena came out with some eyeshadow products. Like I know over time they have had them. It would make the brand feel a little more complete, you know, to have some more things. But this is possibly evening out my eyelids a little bit more, giving me the look of some brightness. Um, this is for the person who really doesn't want to be doing eyeshadow. Um, it feels like it, you can build it a little bit, like if you wanted to go on top, make it seem a little more opaque, you could. Okay, it's acceptable. I'm not jumping up and down, but it's acceptable. Now I'm going to step into the Nourishing Eyeliner, which I have owned this over the years. I got the Spice Chocolate shade. I thought this might be able to look kind of soft and smudgy. Um, it does have the smudger tip. Where's the smudger? Oh, there's a little cap. There's the cap. This shade has a little bit of like a, a shimmer to it. I'm not sure. I think there's like more of a dark brown, but this is softer. Well, brand new liners. You know what we say about those. They're always creamy, pretty much. So this is going on great. I've liked this liner in the past. I've had it in black. I've had it in navy blue. This is a little softer, and it kind of makes sense for the barely there eye to have this kind of a thing. Uh-oh. Somehow made a little mark of it there. I'm going to try to do a little bit down here and then maybe smudge it just on the outside. Oh, that feels good. Good, good, good. I need to cover up or something that little speck I made. Eyelids do kind of feel like they've pretty much set. Go over that a little bit more. I like this color. I like how like kind of soft and natural that looks. Let's move on with some Healthy Lengths Mascara. They have the Healthy Lengths and then don't they also make the Healthy Volume? Up to 100% longer looking lashes. The Hydro Boost line also makes a mascara but it's waterproof and I didn't really want that. So I've used Healthy Lengths in the past like many moons ago so let's give her another shot. It says up to 100% longer looking lashes. Here's our brush. While we're curling here these are the Moisture Smooth Color Sticks. Okay, this is the shade Berry Brown. They still make them. They are amazing. They have beautiful pigment, like the color of a lipstick, the comfort, the true comfort of a lip balm. My story do accompany that. Say it with me. I visited North Dakota one year in February with Bub. That's where he's originally from. I had parts of my face literally freezing, like up my nose and stuff and my lips never got chapped that trip. I only wore those. Boom. Neutrogena Healthy Lengths. Here we go. Wow, it feels like such a classic mascara. Could that be any more of a classic brush? I mean, it's like voluminous, you know, with the brush. It's, at this point, one coat, nicely defining, but definitely sending me the signal that I need to build it some more. It's feeling really like kind of a rich, creamy formula, so it may take some building and it may take some pausing you know, for that to set a little bit more, move over to the other eye and then come back. I will say it's, so far it is adding length. 100% longer? What does that even mean? Like a whole other lash on top of my own lash? 
I think I've told you we're watching the West Wing. There's so much West Wing to watch. Who's your favorite character if you've been into that show at any point in time? I love Leo and the President's um, interactions. I just feel comforted by all the dimly lit rooms and all the hall walking. Yeah, I would say definitely try pausing between coats because there's big building happening on this eye now. Holy cow. Holy. Look at the size of this actual lash. Like me seeing it from my angle from root to tip, I'm like, that's something. Maybe the math is mathin' and it maybe really is 100% more. Neutrogena's got me in a hyaluronic haze right now. Maybe it's Neutrogena, maybe it's a migraine. No, I'm not getting a migraine right now. That would just be rude to get one while shooting a video. I kind of lost track of how many coats I put on there, but this stuff could build for days. Like, very impressive. But pausing between the coats is the key to helping it build. Now, on my lips, like I said, we did this earlier, the multi-use stick. It's beautiful. It comes in one shade. It's really pretty. I like it. Um, I did grab a new gloss, the Hydro Boost Hydrating Lip Shine. It says lips look and feel hydrated for 24 hours. And I've owned one of these in kind of a milky, um, beigey nude shade. And this is called Pink Sorbet. It has a nice little like paddle style applicator. What does it actually look like? Okay, it's got a little pigment on its own. I thought I might just add a little on top. Mm, it does feel nice. Yeah, we'll have to play with that someday just as is, but I really needed that hydrating stick to be part of this look. I wore this tank top. So here we go, guys. This is our finished Neutrogena face. Not that this whole look is the statement I'm really trying to make, like, you must wear all of Neutrogena together all the time, but we wanted to dive in. We wanted to investigate further. I still feel like the things that impress me most are some of those base products. We went through it all at the beginning. Today we're wearing this one and I think it looks beautiful. Uh, the coverage is really nice and it does in some odd way become a bit more one with the skin just as it lays there. Okay, I love that and love the other products I mentioned too, other base stuff. This concealer was not so bad. I don't think it wows me quite as much as the stick, but I'll continue to use it. I, I want to keep working with it. I think it's just sheer enough for it to be that light and work on me. I'm not wowed by this powder. I don't think it really moved mountains, but it did mattify. I feel like Neutrogena knows lip products. Let's just say that real quick. They get it. They have those great little tinted lip balms too that are oval shaped that you can find maybe only in Walmart, I'm not sure, but I, I know I do see them there still. These are great. These glosses are very hydrating and they know what they're doing on this stick because that worked beautifully on lips and cheeks. I think it's great. This mascara kind of wowed me folks. So that's going to stay in the rotation. I did like this liner also in this spice chocolate shade. It just kind of gave me that soft, like kind of walking the line between rich bronze and brown. I see me wearing that quite a bit more. This little one step eye, I'm just going to have to see what that does for me throughout the day. Is this going to collect in the crease? Is this going to do something funky? I don't have quite enough background knowledge on this one to give you like a lot of takeaways there. I'm sorry. Actually, I do have a follow up as I continued to wear that product throughout the day, like within a few hours, I felt like it got tacky all over again. Very annoying. The feeling of eyelids sticking to eye crease. Just not pleasant. Um, I ended up setting it with some other random eyeshadow just because I couldn't take the feel anymore. So you need to know this. It, I think that's kind of a dud. Last but not least, the eyebrow pin. If you're feeling dangerous, I don't know, like check into the shades that they have. Deep brown is essentially black. It gives you a little bit larger than a natural hair stroke thickness. 
and it's a little bit scary. I'm not like in love with the brow. I took a spoolie over this inner corner about a million times and it just, it's gonna be dark there today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your take on Neutrogena. I think we can probably agree they need to bust out some more shades. They need to re-promote healthy skin with new shades and a pump. The newer things that they put out that come out in more shades, we give them a thumbs up for that. And yeah, thank you everyone. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm so glad you enjoyed these videos. And as always, keep those requests coming. I love you. Bye.